Hey folks, Randy Newberg here. Thanks for watching this episode from season nine of Fresh Tracks. Did you know that our Fresh Tracks Plus platform now has a free option? Yeah, if you go over there, you can watch this episode and a few others ad free. And those of you who are paid subscribers, you already know, you can get a lot of exclusive content there. You get early access to content. You get invited to our exclusive live streams. And some of you even win an hour of FaceTime with me where we can plan your hunt. Go check out freshtracks.tv at the link below. What's going on, Randy? We are your, hey, hold on, it's Randy's birthday. Yeah. <laughs> Editors know, it's Randy's birthday. <laughs> yeah. These guys are making a big deal about the fact that it's my birthday today. When you're 56, you don't get too worked up about that stuff anymore. What you get worked up about is the fact that it is time for elk camp. In other words, we are here to pick up our buddy Tim Lesser and head out to our annual elk camp celebration. So that's the exciting part about what's going on today. I told Tim, you know, if you come this week in November, I'm pretty sure that if we get a normal weather pattern, we're gonna be able to get into elk. Well, it's turned out to be a tough hunt. Mr. Beatty. How are you, sir? Great. How are you? Good. Good to see you. Tim Lesser. It's a pleasure. Good to meet you. It's nice to meet you. This is one of those hunts that I look forward to every year because it's what I call my Montana elk camp. Every year I invite some new people. And this year is another person who you've seen on our show twice before, uh, Tim Lesser, who is the vice president of product development at Leupold. Come here, Matt. That's old Matt Daddy there. And every year I have Bo Beatty, our good friend who has the llamas. So we make some sort of arrangement of, okay, I'll rent the llamas and you come up and hunt. It's, it's something I look forward to. You come from a logging family like I do, man, you can buck up a half cord of firewood, lick it each clip. Every time Tim Lesser's been on our show, we shoot, he shoots something big. Same with Bo Beatty. Last year, Bo shot an elk on our show here, not too far from right where we're sitting. This is the biggest elk I've ever seen in this part of Montana, Bo. That makes two of us. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Randy and I met at trade shows or talking on the phone, and you know, Randy does this all the time. And to get to share a little piece of what he does, that's what I was looking forward to. Oh, uh, Kirsten. What is All right, got? Kirsten made your birthday cake. Michael, lead us. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Randy. Happy birthday to you. Make a wish. Well, Tim, I guess we get to go brave the elements of wind today. It looks a little breezy. I don't go on big, long hikes for elk until I know they are there. We're about ready to march up the hill. We got about an hour trot here, so. Well, in this hunt, I was so confident there were gonna be a bunch of elk in this basin. I didn't even get a chance to glass in there. I just told the guys, come on, we're going. And we got in there. No tracks, no droppings, no sign. Grass is tall, hasn't been grazed down by the elk at all. And the wind is screaming. I can tell you we're at 20 mile an hour right now. It's supposed to get to 40. Yeah. And up in that saddle, I'm sure it'll be there's amplified. Lots, there's lots of stuff to block the wind up there. Oh yeah, one dead tree. <laughs> That first day we took and, and went on a pretty good hike. And we hiked up to a ridge line and, and through a saddle and we sat down and we were glassing for elk. Mm -hmm. 
So we sat there for a pretty good spell of time and I started thinking this through that, okay, we had one good storm about 10 days before that, but then it got up in the 60s and 70s. Well, that's not gonna push elk in here. We need another blast. We're supposed to get rain tomorrow, turn into snow, and then the next day, a lot of snow and then really cold, which means the last two days of the hunt could be the kind of ideal conditions that you hope for when you're hunting the upper end of the transition range. Well, I hate to have to yell, but for you to hear me over the wind, I don't have any choice. We're tucked away in this little corner here in probably the calmest spot on the mountain. You get up above us or around the corners, it's just, it's 40 to 50 miles an hour, I'm sure. And I've never killed an elk or seen an elk killed in this kind of wind. So, I'm thinking about hiking out of here and using this afternoon to go scout and look at some more country. On the way in here, I didn't see any tracks, didn't see any beds, no droppings. So I'm thinking they're not in here yet. Oh well, it's only day one. Nothing you can do about it. Beats working, right? It, absolutely. See? Tim agrees, beats working. came back and Bo was sitting up glassing from the tent. <laughs> he might not be feeling good, but he's going to do something hunting related. Uh, most of you might know that he's undergoing cancer treatments right now. This is the second time he's had cancer in three years. How you doing, Michael? I'm worried about you, man. Michael, our camera guy, was really feeling poorly. We were worried that he had COVID. He and Jonathan had been COVID tested just a couple days before we came out. For him to get sick like that was kind of worrisome for me. Monday, partly cloudy skies, high around 25. Winds south, southwest at five to 10. That's all I remember. You guys ready for some lunch? Wanna grab your bowls? Service is ready. You know, you come in, you've got high hopes, um, don't really know what the, the land looks like. I don't have the lay of the land. I'm not sure what the strategy is gonna be, but that is, that's my favorite part. That first day when you just don't even know what's coming. When in doubt, go higher. Uh, we went and glassed a little bit. Found some elk, actually, unfortunately, they're in private. Hey, Bo, did you say that we get uh, tonight dinner is uh, brats and fried onions? What you're missing is what happened when he offered clam chowder. Yeah, I don't do clam chowder. That's right up there with Pucky. Whew. How you doing, Michael? Not that good. <laughs> Three out of ten. Sorry to hear that, buddy. If you could make this in a restaurant, you'd make Chick-fil-A look like a bunch of amateurs. They're really good. We're gonna go back up where we glossed those out last night and see if Day, they decided to be on uh, public. And if they are, we know a road where we can loop over, and then we got about a you know, two, two and a half mile hike in this. We're up here in the wind. We drove up to a spot where you can glass 360 degrees. Uh, huh. Not seeing anything, but it'll be out. Tim's over there. 
elbows over here. It's looking like it could be a good day. It's a lot less windy over on this side over here, but uh, we haven't seen them yet. We're just getting enough light to really start looking, but boy, we can see a long ways from up here. I'm feeling pretty good about it. I, uh, might be a short morning with the rain coming in, but we're gonna give it our best here and see what we can find. You find them? Yeah. <sighs> Me neither. I need an elk hunt like that where I can eat eat breakfast every morning. Big, like, big breakfast, a bunch of coffee. Come out about nine o'clock, and there they are. <laughs> Tip them over, and then you just ride back to town and or the lodge or whatever, and say, "Boys, he's laying over there. Go get him. Let's get him out of there. Go we'll pick him up for us." Yeah. It may lose it the the sense of fun after a while, but it'd be nice to try it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm thinking so. Always saw we're a whole lot of hunters, <laughs> which is part of what comes with hunting public land. I'm glad to see them out here. So what we're doing, folks, is sitting here glassing. You can see forever, which is good, but you can't see any out because they aren't here right now. Which is not good. They're gonna be here in about 48 hours, though. Because this wind is bringing in a, a big storm this evening. Tomorrow there's supposed to be eight inches of snow right here where we're sitting. We're moving to a different spot, folks. You look cold, Bo. You look cold. It became very apparent to me uh, after that morning session that Michael was really sick. <laughs> Michael, what do you think about when you get good service, call your doctor and ask him? Yeah, I'm going to go. I'm going to go tomorrow. He'd been sleeping all night, all morning. We'd left him here, and he was, he was not well. Well, after trying to sleep off this sickness and I don't know, I just have no energy. I feel like I'd be at hold up to the group, but um, Randy's gonna take me into the nearest town and my wonderful girlfriend's gonna come pick me up. I feel pretty, pretty down about leaving the guys, but I also don't wanna slow anyone up or get anyone else sick, so pretty sure it's not the Rona, because they got tested before um, leaving for this trip, so. I feel bad, but don't know what else to do, so. That's the end of this road for me on this trip. But good luck, guys. So we're down to one camera guy. Uh, but in the back of my mind, I'm worried. Okay, what if Michael had something highly contagious? What if Bo gets sick? He's already dealing with all the complications of this. Tim has to fly back on an airplane. They're not going to let him on the plane if he's got COVID. All these things are running through my head. And, and it... <laughs> Yeah, it's just part of the responsibility that falls on my shoulders. For me personally, I was excited to come hang out with Bo, hang out with Randy, learn a little bit about llamas, tending the llamas, um, you know, watering, feeding, etc., and then just seeing how they behave. Just being around those critters, you know, it's a, it's a lot of fun. I learned a lot just about what it takes to really make a true pack llama. How are the llamas looking? Ah, they're good. Nice and happy. Just a windy day. We just thought we'd move them a little bit. Well, we're back from dropping Michael off. His girlfriend came to town and picked him up. He's not looking good. He's slept the whole way into town, coughing, hacking. I don't know what he's got, but hopefully none of us get it. I think we're gonna go do an exercise in utility here. 
The wind was blowing about 40 miles an hour a little bit ago. Now it's down to about 15. And it was raining really hard, but now it's just drizzling. So we're gonna drive up to this glassing spot where last year we saw a bunch of elk from that glassing spot. And we're gonna see if we can use loophole optics to look through all of the moisture that's in here. Like rain mixed with snow. Um, the product development team there at Leupold and Stevens is made up of a group of design engineers, optical engineers, electronics engineers, manufacturing engineers, and we get out and we hunt a lot. Um, but there's, you know, there's times we just need to be in the office. And so with experts like Randy that are out here all the time, we're in constant contact. We're trying to ask, you know, what's working, but more importantly, where can we improve? Where can we get better every single day? And Randy puts it through the paces. And I know there's a group of elk up on top of that knob over there, two and a half miles away. I just got to find them. But I don't know if they're tough enough to stand in the wind the way it's blowing over there. It became very, very obvious to me that the elk aren't in here. Too much moisture and then full moon and lots of hunting pressure and hunting the weekend. So the first three days of our hunt are gonna be not ideal at all, but we're kind of waiting and putting all of our eggs in the basket of hoping that the, after the pressure system moves in and some of the hunting pressure leaves, that we can locate some elk. Once the snow comes, this is their staging area where they'll come to get ready for the winter range, which is pretty close to here, you know, and if they have a light winter, they'll just winter here. Tim, it's getting cold. It's getting real cold. The wind's still blowing. Yeah, it doesn't take long for it to blow the heat right off of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wonder what the elk are gonna do tonight when the storm comes in. Yeah, I think it's gonna be here pretty soon. It's looking that way. They said at eight o'clock, so that's in two hours. It's gonna start snowing. Bo Beatty is the best backcountry cook I've ever encountered. But I already knew that from prior trips. We this is better than what you get at a restaurant any day of the week. And he's whipping it up on this little camp stove. I'm glad you guys like it. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for obliging me. Hey folks, Randy Newberg here. Hope you're enjoying this episode from season nine of Fresh Tracks. It's been out on our Fresh Tracks Plus platform since we launched last September, and now we're launching season 10 over there. No matter where you watch us, whether it's on YouTube or whether you're one of our paid subscribers, we thank you. And if you want to check out Fresh Tracks Plus, I hope you'll go to the link below. It'll take you to freshtracks.tv. Whether you sign up for the free version over there or you sign up for the paid version, either way, we really appreciate it. In terms of, of the hunt, honestly, the most challenging part has been the weather. When we got here, there was no snow at all. But to really top it off, the cloud layer pushed in down on top of us. Well, and like the weatherman said, it was gonna snow last night. I woke up at 5.15 and the cloud level was like right down here in the valley. But that's good. We want some snow, we want some cold. Bring those out down in here. So now we gotta wait for this cloud level to rise above so the mountains aren't hitting. Because the odds are the elk aren't standing down here on the flat. I think this will get them moving. We, got the, we did get the snow, so that's nice. Just need the ability to go look for them now. But I'm with you, I'm thinking they're still coming in, but they're up high.
got up on some of these knobs and, and tried to glass, but the visibility was, was so low. Boy, am I glad I'm not a camera guy right now, having to run this thing with, it's six degrees with an 18 mile an hour wind. I don't know what that wind chill is, but it's cold. And what's happening is the wind's blowing some clouds in here and we're, visibility's coming and going, coming and going. And the other option would be to just take off trekking, but you're way better off to save your energy and let your optics do the walking. And when you see them, then you're ready to go. The unfortunate part of that strategy is it's very dependent upon visibility. Let's go hunt them like mountain lions and look for tracks. Look for tracks, huh? Well, we could go drive around and look for tracks. I'm not gonna know. find any, but it makes me feel good. Feels like you're doing something. <laughs> Bo wants to go look for tracks. You know, I wish I could tell you that every time we came out here, there were elk on every ridge and we had all this footage and all that, but it just doesn't work that way. It's, it's grinding it out like everybody else. So tomorrow it's all on Tim's shoulders. Perfect. Right. Nothing, could, what could go wrong with that? Yeah, don't let us down, Tim. <laughs> I'm, all, I'm all over it, guys. It will come together the way it's supposed to, no matter. All right. So on the fourth day, we go out and it's really cold. It's seven below zero. But the clouds had cleared and the sun's starting to come up. There's a group of something right out there. Looks like meal deer. They're just below that whiter spot. Any antlers? Yep. Hey, Bo, we got a bull. Yeah. Spiky. Oh, it's a spike. Yeah, I saw a movement, but it's a spike. Yeah. On the far hill by the road? Yeah, to the right of to the, the road. To the right of that road. Sorry, I put it up there for giraffes. Well, we got today and tomorrow. And I already got some deer, some deer, and I heard an elk out here. And there, it's cows with a couple spikes. Cows are legal. <laughs> But I think all of us have decided we're going to try to hold out for a legal bull. Leave the truck running because it's seven below zero today. And if we get a little cold, we can jump in the truck, warm up, come back out, glass some more. On the way in here, we did cut a, a lone single bull track. Figured I'd walk down here and try to see if maybe that bull came across here just before it stopped snowing. Until we can come up with something different, I'm gonna pick all of this apart and look for a, a needle in a haystack. Elk are hands down my favorite animal to hunt, whether it be early season with a bow or this later season stuff as they're headed towards the sanctuaries. There's this dance that you can play with elk where you, you know what they're trying to accomplish. Where are they gonna be at that time of the year? How are they gonna be behaving? Seen a couple hunters, four moose, and the elk are far more absent than I was hoping for. We still have this evening and we have tomorrow. Don't give up on us yet. Every once in a while, we will pull a rabbit from the hat. Since everything we've seen is now bedded down mm -hmm. and the wind is starting to pick up again, I'm saying we probably mosey towards camp and look for any track across in the, the road. I like that idea. And then be back up here this afternoon to see if anything stands up and makes an appearance. Okay, sounds like a good idea to me. We got the cold weather, that's for sure. Yeah.
I'm not seeing much. Oh. I'm trying to pick apart the uh, the timber up there and see if we can't find something, set of tracks, something that might give away a, a secret hiding spot. It's just too beautiful not to be outside right now. So I figured, while it may be futile, we'll give it a try. And uh, you, know, you can't win if you don't enter. <laughs> So I'm thinking, even though this snow is threatening to mess up our visibility again if we get up on glassing knob, I'm bullheaded enough that I'm going to go do that again. It works. That's the best, best thing I've seen. All right, folks, we're back. About 43 miles away, Tim has found three cows, cow elk. I think we're gonna fold it up for the evening, folks. <clears throat> the truck is running over there, warming up. You can probably hear it purring in the background. But tomorrow, tomorrow, <laughs> it's like this all the time. It is. Yep. <laughs> I pity the elk. <laughs> I'm telling you, mean gene. I pity the fool who messes with Tim Russell. Yeah, it really has. And if you watch wrestling, you'll know who I was right there, right? Mean Gene Ogerlin was the guy who'd put the mic in the guy's face. And he'd be all mad and puffed up. My grandma thought wrestling was real, I'm sorry. When I was about 14 and I went to a wrestling match and realized it wasn't real, it broke my heart because then I was going to have to go tell Grandma, Grandma, wrestling ain't real. She said, shut up, get out of here. Give me some more cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> Let the day slip away in the golden hour. We've got nothing but time and music. Well, a little chicken and rice soup. I've been making this since 98. 1998. So tomorrow, we're going to get it done. We're going to try it anyhow. Gonna give it our all. All right. Can you believe this? Last morning, Bo Beatty sends us out the door with homemade breakfast burritos. Amazing. We got up, and it was zero visibility again. Well, it was clear as a whistle all night and cold. And then, just before daylight, snow started blowing back in. So we got visibility of about 200 yards. I picked the wrong spot, the wrong area for what I thought the, the weather was gonna be when I applied for my film permit a few months ago. And so this is all on me. I'm thinking we gave it a lot of effort and given the conditions and what we kind of had to deal with, we did pretty good. I guess it's still potentially possible that we'll bump into something here, but the weather's really trying its hardest to make sure that we don't do that. 
Well, we got a half day of hunting left. And uh, we came to break down camp. We're gonna get Bo on the road. There's a blizzard between here and Idaho Falls, so I don't want him driving at night. So I offered that we'll come break camp, get him loaded, get the llama loaded, and he should head out. I'll admit, filling my freezer and eating elk meat or deer meat or antelope meat all winter and all next summer is very important to me. But the true pleasures that I get from hunting now isn't necessarily filling my tank. It's seeing the success of others and it's sharing time with people who are important. Pleasure, my friend. Thank you. Absolutely. Appreciate it, Bo. Stay well. Yeah. Let me know how we can help. John, see so, you, bro. Been a pleasure. You bet. We got about maybe five hours left to kill an elk. So we're going to go clear the clouds, get them moving, and we're going to kill them. I can hear the wind chiming. It's always been you back Well, they say those who are patient are always rewarded. We've sat here waiting out this blizzard for the last two hours. And look. Huh? I hope that all of you who haunt have friends like Tim and Bo. I mean, Tim came all the way from Oregon and took time off work, and this hunt has been a bust. He's told me every time, don't worry about it, man, I am having a blast. This is what I came for. Uh, we had, you know, high hopes for potentially, you know, getting a bull. Right now, my freezer is pretty much empty. So far this year, my son, Sawyer, is the only one who's been able to provide meat for the house. He shot a, a pretty good blacktail buck about a week and a half ago, and, but I'm just really trying to absorb as much as I can um, so I can be more successful in finding and, and, you know, shooting some, but interacting with these elk. Well, Tim, we're down to about 10 minutes. Mm hmm The sun has slid behind the hills over there. Yeah. I hope any of you watching this think about the traditions and and the things that you find important about hunting. And if you've ever had the inclination to start a camp, to start a tradition, to invite people who are important to you, I hope you'll go do that.